going to show how to create this pagination. Note that this is not a recommended pattern for uh, scrolling a table. Uh, we have better ways to do it. But if you do need this, we'll show you how to do it. So we'll drop a table on a page and we're going to bind this table to an ADP. Um, to do that, we're first going to create a new data type that has the structure of the data we're going to show. We're just picking here uh, the specific fields we want to show in the table based on a selection of, let's say, one record. So this is now the type. Now we can go over and create a variable that would be our active data provider, or sorry, array data provider, our ADP. We'll call it my ADP. I'm going to create another variable. This one is going to be called my PDP and it's going to be of type any. This is a pagination data provider that we're going to use later on. For now, for the ADP, we're going to set the type to map to the type we just created. And we're also going to indicate which is the ID column for this um, type. Okay. So, the next thing we want to do is create an event, actually not a custom event, but rather one of the pre-built event over here to fetch the data into the ADP. So we're going to use the enter event to the page and we are creating a new action chain in our page to fetch the data. I'll go over here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call a REST service to get all the employees. Okay. Um, so we're going to map it to the endpoint that fetches employees. Now, at this point, you can do things like fetch just part of the uh, set of records. But in the example in the video, we're going to fetch everything at once. Okay? We change the name, and then we're going to use an assign variable action to take the results of fetching the employees, which returns an array of the employees and map it into the data array that is inside our array data provider, like that. So now we have everything we need in order to show the data in the table. So we can go to the table in design mode and map the table to be based on the ADP variable we created. Then we can select which columns from this ADP we want to show and pick each one of the columns. You're going to see the data fetched into the table and shown over here. All right, so this is your normal table. The next thing you want to do is you want to add a pagination component. So if, again, if you go into the JET cookbook, into the sample they have, they explain what you need to do. You need to create a pagination a data provider out of the array of data that you have. And they even have the code over here to do that. So we're going to do something very simple. We're going to copy this part of the code that creates this pagination data provider. In Visual Builder, we're going to create this in a JavaScript function. So we're going to add here a call to a module function, and we're going to create a new function in our page. And we'll call this one create PDP, for example. And we're going to then navigate to this function and paste the code we just copied over from the JET cookbook. This is what we're going to return from the function, a new pagination data provider. Now you're going to see some things are going to be highlighted as errors. For example, the department array, this is the array that we're getting in. So let's just make sure it's the same name for the variable. The two other things are simply missing the definitions. Um, so we're going to copy those definitions over here again from the JET sample um, over to the define area and then over to the function area, the two other names that we're using in there. So now everything basically would be marked as um, valid. Can go back into our action chain and then we're going to pass into the action chain the value um, of the array of data, right? So we can do it actually directly from the action that fetches it from the rest, okay? This would, by the way, allow you to eliminate the previous step if you want to of assigning and working with the ADP. You can do it later on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign the results from the JavaScript function into our myPDP variable. Again, this is an type any variable. Uh, this is why we can include it in here. This is it for the action chain. Now let's go back to our page and we're going to need to add 
the pagination component. Okay, so we can see right now, um, this is the code. We have a table. Inside the table, you can add an OJ pagination component. You can actually see the sample code again in the Jet Cookbook over here. Okay, um, so it's just an OJ paging control. So we're going to get this into our page. We can use our code insight, pick up OJ paging paging control, and then set the properties. Now the first property is the data, and the data is inside our PDP, right? The variable that we created. Okay, so now we have this pagination in there. Other things you can set are, for example, the size of, uh, or the number of records you're going to show here, right? So we're going to show, instead of 10 records, we're going to show, let's say, four records at a time. You can also say the location of the pagination, bottom or top. All right, so you can see the pagination component is in here, but the table still shows all the records, and that's because the table is still bound to the ADP. We actually need it to be bound to the PDP, right? So we'll do the switch now, and now you can see four records at a time. If you go into live mode, you can paginate through these records and see um, the values represented.